Uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce Adam L. Barrett, co-host of the podcast of Dice and Men, and one of our senior React consultants who has been working with React for the last few years. Today, he's going to show us how to combine Rx, JS, and React, which to me is like a classic matchup. It's not classic. It's new. It's hot. It's not it's classic. New, it's hot. It's exciting. Oh. As Mitch said, I am Adam L. Barrett, and I will be talking today about uh, RxJS with React. Let's rock on up to this. So this is actually um, a small part of a bigger talk. I actually have a longer talk. Um, maybe give you a link uh, that I. This is just a small part. Now, normally I talk about the why and the you know what benefits and stuff, but this time I'm just going to dive right in with the code demo and just show you the how. This is going to be the how RxJS with React. So. What we got here is a uh, pretty classic uh, React component. There's nothing really special about here. I got a bunch of imports up here. Don't worry about them. That's just uh, so that I don't have to import them later and I can save a little bit of typing. Uh, so what we got here is uh, an app. I'm going to make the alarm clock app. This demo is actually lovingly stolen from John Linquist's demo. Uh, he did it on using RxJS with Vue. And so I'm going to steal it and do RxJS with React. So yeah, here we go. So we've got... Uh, a function component here using the use state hook, which by the way, hooks are awesome, you should use them. Uh, in particular, RxJS works really well with sort of the new modern React stuff where there's you know, function components, hooks, and uh, concurrent mode. And so uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create ourselves a little RxJS observable. Um, so I'm just gonna just, for lack of creativity, call it observable and give it a little dollar sign. That's just a little convention that says like, hey, this is uh, RxJS observable and not, you know, kind of used to do it with like jQuery and stuff. Uh, and so I'm gonna use a real simple observable creator. There's a bunch of different ones. Uh, there's of or from event, but I'm just gonna use interval. Interval, all it does is you give it a number of milliseconds, we'll just give it a thousand, and it'll emit a new event, this observable emit a new event uh, after every, whatever, milliseconds in this case, every second. Um, the Interesting thing about this talk that I'm doing too, I should say, is I'm not gonna teach you how to do RxJS or React. Um, if you want to learn RxJS, we have a, a whole bunch of uh, material you can learn at the Gatobi Academy as well as a YouTube series. Uh, if you wanna use React, uh, call me uh, if you wanna learn React. But uh, in, I'm just gonna assume you know what you're doing here. So the way we connect RxJS with React though, is we're gonna use useEffect. useEffect, of course, takes a function, and in that function, is where you do side effects. And our side effect here is subscribing to this RxJS observable. So I'm gonna to subscribe to this observable using the subscribe method. And you pass subscribe an observer. Now observer can be an object with like a next error and complete uh, methods on them, or it can just be a function if you've got a simple, and this is pretty simple. So we're just gonna pass it the function set state. So if the observable emits new value, it's gonna pass that to uh, set state, which is gonna re-render this component uh, what's happening right now, you can sort of see that zero, 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 and then it does a bunch of crazy stuff is every time, uh, without a dependency array here, every time it re-renders, it would unsubscribe from the last observable and subscribe to a new one. So we're just going to say, we're not syncing with any state. So we're just going to put a empty array here to say, we're not, we're not syncing with any state. Do this, you know, the old way of thinking was when it mounted and, and clean it up when it unmounts. And so what do we got? Yeah, so now we've got this working. So we subscribe to the observable. The observable is emitting a new number every you know, one second, and boom, it's showing on the screen as our state here in the display div. Uh, so one of the reasons that RxJS works so well with React is that it follows sort of the same paradigm. So in React's use effect, you're supposed to return a cleanup function, a function that says, okay, when you're done with this, here's your, here's your cleanup. And so we're gonna be good React citizens, and we are going to return a cleanup function, and our cleanup function is actually gonna come from the cleanup function in RxJS. So RxJS returns a subscription when you subscribe to it with the subscribe method, and that subscription has an unsubscribe method on it. And so by doing this, now whenever React deems that it's necessary to clean up, you know, either because it's unmounted or whatever, it's automatically gonna unsubscribe from this observable, uh, cleaning up everything you need. And this right here, this set state, use effect and unsubscribe, subscribe and unsubscribe, it's pretty much all the magic we're gonna need to connect our RxJS with this uh, nifty little uh, component. So let's make this demo. So okay, we got this thing counting up. That's not really what we want right now. What we wanna do is we wanna take this and turn it into more of an alarm clock kind of idea. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is, you're gonna notice actually, 
maybe when I hit refresh here, it's a little easier to notice. There's like blank before it hits zero. And that's just by the way interval works. It basically waits the first second before emitting the first value zero, then the second value one. Um, and so we're gonna solve that because RxJS deals with both synchronous and asynchronous events in sort of the same way. And so if this observable immediately has, you know, state in it already, when you subscribe, it'll just synchronously return that. Like it'll synchronously emit that. And so all we need to do is use a little thing called a little RxJS operator called start with, and we'll just give it, you know, in this case, a value of zero, I say, I suppose. So now it's just gonna start with zero. It's still gonna wait that extra second, but that's okay. Uh, we obviously don't wanna count up. Uh, we actually kinda wanna count down because this is an alarm clock. So we are just gonna use a scan operator. In RxJS, the scan operator works kinda like a reduce function. It takes like its current state uh, and the thing that's emitted into it and then you return the new state for it. Um, we're gonna actually ignore the uh, numbers that are being admitted into it. Function here that is just time minus one. Uh, and so now we've got, hey, it's counting down, um, but it's going into the negatives and we don't really want that, right? Uh, we actually kind of want to stop when it hits zero. So let's start at five and then we'll actually say, we'll use another operator, take while, and take while uh, takes a function and basically you return, uh, you know, a, a true or false basically. And we'll just say, we'll take while uh, time is greater than zero. So now what do we end up with here? We've got an alarm clock thing that starts at five, counts down to one, and then stops because this observable has completed. And so it'll be emitting no more, no more values. Cool. Uh, let's just call, let's just rename this. We're just gonna call that the uh, countdown observable or countdown stream, depending. Some people say stream, but observable is the right term. Um, and now, what we want to happen when this uh, actually gets down to zero is we actually kind of want it to do something, you know, like th this is to simulate the alarm going eh, 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 eh. Uh, So RxJS has this thing called concat, and it basically lets you uh, combine two observables. It's gonna go through the first one until it's completely, you know, it's completed itself, then it goes to the next one. And we're gonna pass the two observables. Um, the second observable we're gonna use using create of, which is just make an observable of whatever I pass into this, and we'll just pass it a string that says something like, wake up and uh we'll just do the little uh ah, party hat thing here <laughs> okay so now if i've done this correctly it should go five four three two one wake up yay cool let's just like increase this countdown to 250 so we don't have to actually watch that countdown every single time all right we're off to a good start but you know what's an alarm clock without a snooze button right so let's create a snooze button um we'll just say a button you know, with a class of snooze. And uh, we'll just expand that and it'll say snooze. All right, we got the snooze button. Um, now what we want to do is whenever we press the snooze button, we want to like basically restart that, uh, that alarm clock countdown again. Uh, so we need to use actions. So how do we do actions with our RxJS uh, setup here? We're reading from the observable, but how do we like push stuff into it? And so with that, RxJS has this thing called subjects. Subjects are cool because they, uh, they are both observable and observer. Uh, so they have the interface of both. And so you can use them like an observable, like we're doing with all this stuff, but they also have a next error and complete method on them. So you can actually push values into them. So we'll say new subject here. And uh, now we've got sort of this action. And we'll just say on click, we will push something onto this every time. Oh. Uh, just say next and just for fun we will push on the word uh, snooze as a string uh, just to show you what's going on here i will say um, i'll just action stream subscribe and uh, we'll just like console log this for now just to show you what's going on and i'll pull this up and so you can sort of see here every time i hit snooze there's this little console log because that's it's like a stream of snooze events, essentially. Um, and so now how do we combine the snooze event with our current like, oh, wake up countdown thing? Well, we're gonna use another uh, operator here. So we're gonna uh, pipe, this is a repeat when, and now this takes a function that returns an observable, and whenever that observable emits, 
it's going to cause the observable that just completed to repeat itself. So in this case, we're going to go with the, you know, the action stream here, which is our snooze button events. So now every time I press the snooze button, oh, we can snooze a little bit longer. Awesome. Yeah, we're off to a great start. Uh, <laughs> great start. Uh, so yeah, we've got that working. That's pretty cool. Uh, one thing that's kind of weird though is if I keep hitting snooze, oh, it kind of gets confused. It's jumbled up. Oh, I'm clicking, 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 clicking. And that's because of the way uh, our extra JS observables work. They're what you call, there's this difference between hot and cold. But the idea is every time you subscribe to it, it's sort of a new execution context. It's sort of like, hey, starts this off. So we're getting a new interval every time we subscribe to these, this thing. Um, every time I hit the snooze button. And so the way we want to solve that is we want to make the countdown just like one countdown. That Like it's one observable. You have to wait for it to be done before you can sort of repeat it. Um, and so the way we do that is really easy. We're just going to pipe another uh, operator here called share. And so now we've got this one observable. And so now I can hit snooze and I'm clicking snooze, but nothing's happening. It's just, oh yeah, it, the snooze events are uh, being ignored and it's just one until it's ready. So now uh, we're almost there. We, what we're gonna do though is we're gonna make a dismiss. Now this is like, the idea would be, this is the alarm going off eh, 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 and we wanna say, okay, I'm up, leave me alone, I'm done. Um, and so let's just change this to a, let's just copy this again. We're gonna rename this the, snoozable alarm and uh, this we'll just take that for now oops snoozable alarm and we're going to add a dismiss button actually i'm just going to copy this button put it in here um, make it dismiss actions instead of uh, snooze actions and i better rename the button there we go so now we've got this dismiss action. Now, right now, this mix action and the snooze action are both doing the same thing because we're not really differentiating uh, between actions. We're basically saying on any action, do this snooze thing. So we're going to change that. We're going to say, let's make, uh, you know, this is an observable of only the snoozes. And so it's the actions and we'll pipe it through a filter, which is, you know, does the action equal snooze uh, action thingy action thingy not action thingy. filter is not to my oops better put that back filter cool okay uh, so now, uh, if we subscribe to this instead of the generic actions, now I can snooze, but the dismiss button does nothing. Okay, so now we've got the uh, we've got to make a sort of a an observable of dismiss actions, and uh, we'll just make this you know filter on the dismiss actions, and now we can use this dismiss observable in kind of the same way we did before. We'll just say uh, you know this dismiss is going to complete this, this uh, observable so that we can't snooze it anymore and there won't be any more countdowns. And so we'll just pipe the snoozable alarm. We will say uh, another observable take until, and take until basically says, I'll take until, and you can pass it a, uh, an observable, we'll pass it the dismiss, dismiss observable, and now this observable will complete when this happens. And so what does that give us if I've done everything correctly here, which I guess we'll see if we do. Um, it'll give us the ability to complete this. Oh, and then because it's completed, we will do that thing with concat where we'll say, when this observable completes, we'll add another one of some text and we'll just say something along the lines of like, have a nice day, <laughs> yay. And we'll, just an emoji for fun, we'll give them the hug emoji. All right. Let's see if I've done everything correctly. So uh, I've got the snooze working. Yeah, yeah, you can hit the snooze button a bunch of times, it doesn't work. And then I'm gonna say, hey, dismiss, hey. And now the snooze button does nothing. One more time here, I'll just refresh that. Here we've got the countdown, snooze, snooze, and I'm just gonna hit dismiss, boom, have a nice day. So that was my live coding demo. Um, if you wanna learn more, I've got a, a, a blog series on Dev2. You can check it out, dev2.vitovi and look for RxJS with React. Uh, this will go in more depth into things and do at a little slower pace. So you can sort of learn a little more as you go. 
Um, I've also got an implementation of sort of this pattern that I was talking about, sort of instead of having them sort of separately using use effect and uh, use state, wrapping that up into a custom hook and then uh, you know, providing that dispatch method and, and the observables to sort of hook on. Um, yeah, that's my whole talk. Uh, are there any questions? Say I'm new to RxJS and I don't really know what's going on and I want to be able to like console log what's happening without creating a new subscription. How would I do that? Well, there's an excellent way to do that called uh, uh, tap. Uh, it's an operator and basically tap just sort of like sees what's going on, but doesn't actually, it, it, it just pipes the event through it. It doesn't affect anything. So in this case, let's put tap on maybe the uh, uh, snooze ones. I'll just, I'll pipe the snooze actions into a, into a tap operator here. And uh, it just gives you like, hey, what's going on here? And then maybe I can console log this. Um, and you can sort of put these anywhere you put in your operators. And now I should get a little console log of like my snooze actions when they happen. See that? Does that make sense? And so yeah, you can put this little tap operator anywhere you need, sort of debug what's going on at different times. That's very useful, thank you.